Hey guys, today I'll be checking out the XSR F40 flight controller. It's got a built-in XSR and a few other cool things. So, in the package you get the flight controller. These little bits here. Uh, these pins, which I won't be using and I recommend most people don't use anymore. But if you wanted to, you could use pins and you get plenty included. And you also get these black rubber um, damping vibration isolation pieces. So basically these go into the holes your mounting holes here and reduce the vibration so it's just a way to soft mount it uh, I won't be using those either because I have different soft mount standoffs but these will do great if you're using hard standoffs and you want to soft mount the board I recommend that that's a really good way to do it now the features here it says it weighs 6 grams we've got channels 16 and on channel 8 we have RSSI so you can set that up in beta flight or whatever you're using so that you can see it on the OSD you also have UART 1 as SBUS, I believe, for your receiver, and UART 6 for your XSR smart port. So it comes with that, you get all the telemetry data, that's pretty cool. What it includes here is an SD slot, so that's nice if you want to do a lot of black box stuff. Uh, it has an F405 CPU, obviously. It's got a 6-axis MPU 6000 gyro, so that's been quite commonly known to give limited noise, it's not too sensitive, it's quite a good gyro, and also it has a barometer. So it's a BMP 280 if you're interested in any kind of things that involve a barometer, or even if you want to know your height or something on your OSD, that's a cool feature to have. It also runs 200 milliamps at 5 volts, so not much to say about that. Alright, so taking a look at the board, obviously it says it's 36 by 36 millimeters, so it's no bigger like some of their other PDB options. It'll fit well in any 36mm stack with 30.5mm mounting holes. Now, it says it's 6mm high. I'm assuming that's from the top of the USB port to the bottom component here. There's nothing protruding too much from this board, so it's not going to take up a ton of space vertically. It says on the box, or the packet here, that's 6 grams. So we're going to check that right now. 7.8. That is including this little piece here for the SD card, which wouldn't weigh much, as well as your two antennas. So you get all of that there, and it is coming in at 7.8 grams. Not bad at all. Now, here is your F4 processor. Here's your SD card slot. Uh, in a build, this is the top. So if you have this in a build and there's something on top of it, it will be slightly difficult to access the SD card because it goes in that way. Uh, so depending on your build it might make it more difficult I probably won't be using that anyway and it does come with as you can see a little plastic sheet in there and that will protect it from getting anything in it so I'm assuming that's also there because it looks like it comes with some silicon conformal coating type stuff it's quite shiny so it's got a protective layer there and when you're adding that kind of stuff you want to protect your SD card port so the pads don't become useless now, this button here is your binding button, so that will be very easy to access when it's in your quad if you want to rebind it for any reason. And this other button over here is the bootloader button. They are switched around from what I expected based on their other receivers, and that's why I'm recording this voiceover later. Now, uh, motor, inputs and outputs, it comes with six. So it's built for a quadcopter, it's got one on each corner and it has two extra ones you can use for something else. That is number one right there. Number, let's see, three right there. Two right there. And four up there. So they are roughly on the corners. That will be good for some builds. Uh, in my case, it won't matter. I'll be showing you how I mount mine. If you've got ESCs coming in from each side, then that will be convenient. And if you've got a four in one, it won't make much difference. Uh, it will make it a little bit more difficult than having them all in one spot. You've also got buzzer right there, so you can wire your positive and negative for your buzzer, and then you can run one of those if you want. You've got ground. This says VBAT right there, if you look closely at that. And current sensor. So it looks like that middle pad is for your battery voltage, and that is if you want to measure it on your OSD, or your current, if you have a current sensor externally, you can wire it to there. Obviously this doesn't have one because it does not take the power through your quad so it won't be able to measure the current. 
you've got 5 volt in there and ground, so these big pads right here are your main power. As this thing says, it runs on 4 to 10 volts, so chances are you'll be running that on a 5 volt or a 9 volt regulator, and you can plug that one in right there. Now, the other side, you've got OSD chip, you've got some other stuff here, somewhere there's the barometer, um, I don't know which one that is, but anyway, it's on there. You've got these two for your antennas. These connectors are a little bit bigger than what comes on something like the XM Plus. Uh, they're a more standard one. I think they're the same size as the ones on most video transmitters. That means it won't work with the XM Plus replacement I have, I believe. Plugging the board in on Betaflight now. Now let's look at the version. We're on Omnibus F4, so this is the flash target, 3.1.7. So, for the build, I'll probably go and flash that to the latest version of Betaflight on Omnibus F4. That's easy to do. You can find videos on that online if you're interested. Now, let's go back in and have a look at our ports. So, you can see nothing set up here. No telemetry, no serial RX. So, basically, your receiver and smart port will not work out of the box. And in the receiver tab, I've got absolutely nothing here. Cool. Not a big deal. It's UART1 with serial RX, I believe. So we're going to try and turn that one on there. And then on UART 6, you've got telemetry, smart port is what it's running on. Not free sky, smart port. Cool. So now we're going to save and reboot that. You'll also need to go into your configuration tab and come down to your receiver, set it to serial based receiver, so you on that, and change it to SBUS. Now save and reboot and you are done. Okay. And boom, receiver. So now it is set up, it's on the correct one. I will test the telemetry later as well. Now I'm going to bind it and check that that works. So right here you can see this red flashing light. The one above it is a green LED, right above it. And that one will go green when it is bound. So basically when it's flashing there, it doesn't have a connection or it's not bound. And this is gonna be a really simple process because all you need is USB power to power your receiver. You don't need an external source. You can see the 5 volt source I have set up there for testing is not connected right now and the receiver lights will still work. To bind your receiver, go to the model setup page, go down to the bottom, check it's on D16, channels 1 to 16, set your receiver to one that's not in use. If I go to 5, it's already used, so it'll overwrite that if I try and bind it. If I go to 6, not used, so that's what I want. And I tried to bind this a bunch of times before until I realized that the bind button and the boot button are swapped around from what made sense to me. On the RXSR and the XM Plus, you use this kind of tiny button here to bind. And I assumed that this button here would be a boot button, the bigger, easier to access one. Uh, but that's not the case. I don't know why. It's a very weird thing I've done. But this one here, this big one next to the SD card slot, is actually the bind button. So make sure you know that. Now what I'll do is turn on binding mode. Now I'll start chirping. And then you want to hold down the bind button, which is this big one here, not this tiny one over here, which definitely confused me. Uh, so you just hold that down with your fingernail or whatever. And then take your power source, in this case I'm plugging it into USB on my computer. And you see the little flashing red light and green light up the top. Exit bind mode. Unplug your flight controller, plug it in, and it's bound. You got that green light. I'm kind of laughing right now because I spent ages trying to figure this out. It's that simple. You use that big button there, not the little one there. So you can see on page 11 that smart port is working. If I go down here, I've pressed discover new sensors already, so it's discovering them at the moment. And you can see them all here. You've got the receiver battery voltage. That's what's going into it. Uh, you can see... The angle, if I move it around, changes. Same with all these accelerometer values, all changes when I move it around. Now this time if I go on the beta flight and I go into my receiver tab, there you go, my cord's spinning out. As you can see, they're all moving. Uh, they will be messed up, that's throttle are moving, it doesn't work. The channel map, you actually have to select this one, not the one with FR Sky in it. Weird, yep. Now save that with T-A-E-R is the way around. And now I have throttle, I've got roll, hitch, yaw, all working correctly. Now the RSSI channel 
you can see I've got AUX2 says 2020 there. That one is, sorry, it's AUX4. That one's the one that's doing something because this one comes pre-flashed with RSSI on channel eight. So if I set this to AUX4, which is the eighth channel and save, I had to move the radio pretty far away to get the reading to change. But anyway, I've got on AUX4, you can see it's jumping around. It's set to AUX4 as RSSI channel in setup. And you've got RSSI. It's jumping around there. As you can see, it is working. So I just found out before that this board does have UART3 broken out, which means that you don't have to use soft serial to set up smart audio. So what I've done right here is I've taken the audio wire from my connector for my Unify, which is the white one, and soldered it right here. This is the TX3, so you see you've got V, then TX3, so it's the second pad over, and it's soldered there. And then you've got RX3 and ground. So you just need that one soldered right there. And then you can simply enable Smart Audio on UART3 in Betaflight, and it should all be set up. Uh, now, these are smaller solder pads, as you can see. If you're looking for them the next to the SD card slot, I don't think it's noted on their, uh, on their spec sheet. Okay, now that I've soldered it up to UART3TX, I can just connect in Betaflight, go into ports, find UART3, make sure it's not, none of this stuff is on, that's all disabled, serial RX is off, and peripherals, TBS Smart Audio, or you might be using something with IRC Tramp like the Matec VTX, so we're going to use TBS Smart Audio on this one. Save and reboot, and let's check it out. And there you go. Up in the top left corner, you can see right there my video channels. And I will go in with the transmill now. We're going on to features, VTX, SA, smart audio. And there we go. So guys, I've been flying this flight controller now for quite a while. This is the XSRF4, it's been smashed around for a few weeks. Uh, and as you would expect from modern flight controllers, uh, there has not been any problems with it. Uh, and I really love it. Uh, not much more I can say. All the features are cool, having the telemetry built into it. Just great. I'd highly recommend this board too. It's uh, about 50 USD and you get a receiver with it and all those features. I love it. Uh, hope you guys enjoy the review. See you guys in the next video. Yeah, my, my iron's sort of broken.